So this is a look at the field, Italy 2, France 2, Great Britain, the United States of America, Australia, and the People's Republic of China 1. I get the feel this is a fantastic World Cup. There are so many great races, competitions relentless. World's we've best a, times. Yeah, we've got a race like this to come. So, Italy on the far side, Paolo Cavini, 23, Giovanni Cadato, the same age, David Varetta, 22, and Alessandro Bonamuenta, 22 years of age. A young crew, Italy, two. Well, this is the top French sweet boats, Thibaut Thulan, Guillaume Thulan from the pair in Tokyo, Benoit Brunet and Théo Rey. 23 year old from Society Nautique Bergerac in the stroke seat. In lane three. Oof, the favourites, the world champions. Ollie Wilkes come into the boat this year, wasn't in the boat last year. Dave Ambler subbed in the boat to win gold last year. Matt Aldrich, the powerhouse, had to miss out on a world gold last year for this four. I think he got COVID. Freddie Davison, the talismanic strokeman, closest to the camera. So next to them. It's the USA. Michael Grady, furthest away from us, looking round. California Rowing Club. Nick Meads, from New York Athletic Club, in the two seat. Chris Carlson, California Rowing Club. As is Liam Corrigan, former Oxford University oarsman. These men, how wound up are they for this race? How wound up is everyone in Australia watching? Alex Pennell, Spencer Turin, Jack Hargreaves, Alex Hill, Olympic champions from Tokyo. What more do you need to say? And here are the Chinese, Li Wenli, Chen Xiaoping, Xu Kuiao, and Chai Pen Peng. Finished in the C final of the men's four last year at the Worlds. They are going quicker this year, as you can see from their presence in today's A final. Highly anticipated final, this one. Will Australia go all out to lead the British? By more than they did last time. We'll see what will USA have to say about the contest between the Australian and the British crews. How will the British play it? Lots of questions in this race. And look at him lead off. Look at Alex Hill go as he does off the start. The South Australian really going through the gears leading his crew off but uh, it looks like a great start on this near side by china yeah china 145 strokes per minute flying out of the gate in that first starting sequence china won with a couple of meters lead over great britain and the aussies the u.s just behind them in fact, Italy just ahead of the US, and then it's over to France 1. He sets a nice rim on Sai Pepeng in the stroke seat. We've seen him in a lot of different crews. The Chinese eight uh, comes from a family of one, as do a lot of these Chinese. 27-year-old really, I think, is moving on. Great start from them. Great Britain look calm. They look cool, collected over the far side. But it's Australia that have that one, two-metre lead over the British. Alex Hill really works hard, doesn't he? I think the Australians are a little more rugged in their style than the British Jack Hargreaves, red they call him, in the three seats. The man from Sydney University, New South Wales, just setting the boats up, but Britain moving through ominously, I think, for this field into a race leading position in the first 500 metres. 124 through the first 500. Quick time, it's not world's best, it's a second slower than world's best time, but the British won't worry. Look at Freddie Davison there. Look at how smooth he is. He looks like he's out for a, a Sunday afternoon stroll, not like a race down the track of the World Cup. Yeah, super, super smooth, and they're up at 37 strokes per minute. Uh, the US at 39, the Aussies up at 41, so having to work a little bit harder for it. But yeah, GB looking so, so smooth as they start to push uh, the field away. We're looking at the young Italian four over there, Cavini, Cadato, Verratta, and uh, Bonamuenta in the stroke seats. And see Australia, they're so dogged. They're just like a dog with a bone. They just won't let go. They look more rugged. They're coming into the back end. They're working it so hard. Spencer Turin in the two seat, really shoving it down there. Alex Pennell in bows, a little more smooth. 
I think their coach, Rhett Aycliffe, you know, they've been over here for, what, seven, eight days, the Australians. Um, done such a good job with them, but I think there's some smoothness that can come in to their technique. I think they've got more to come. We'll see that on the third World Cup in Lucerne. This is where the British moved on the Australians in the semi-final, but Australia are now just one. 0.14 seconds behind just a meter and they are moving Kali. yeah fantastic isn't it and uh, australia well they even had their bow just ahead of gb for a moment but as we saw at the thousand gb led and continues to lead but it's toe to toe the aussies at 40 gb at 37 so they have somewhere to go the question is how hard have the australians worked to be in that position the rating's high we know they can win races with a high rate we saw that in the olympics we saw they lost races with a high rate. We saw that in the 2019 Lynx World Championships. There's the Americans in the centre lane. There's the British out in front. This is their territory. They will look to dominate. They will look to their big three man. Matthew Alder is the 27 year old, originally from Christchurch Rowing Club, to anchor the rhythm of Freddie Davison. They are moving slowly. Dave Amber in the two seat, but still not a distinctive move. And Australia are going with them. This is going to go to the wire. Yeah, fantastic. I love watching Alexander Hill, the stroke seat of the Aussie crew, just big surge into the back half of the stroke. It is GB, though, just by a hair. The Aussies are going. The Aussies are going now. They are trying to make this third 500 their territory, and Britain know they're in a race. This is where they moved away from the Aussies in yesterday's semi-final. We're coming to 1,500 metres. It's going to be in the sprint for the line. Australia have the advantage. No, it's Great Britain. Oh, great. Says three metres. They're not three metres up, the British. <laughs> what are they talking about? I think Britain might just have it in the sprint for the line. I think the Australians have worked so hard to be in contact. And there are the British. They're moving now. This is their territory. They are moving out. They are using their smoothness. Perhaps they've conserved a bit of energy. I don't know if that's the wrong expression because they've been redlining it, working as close as they can to maximum pressure. And they are moving out on the Australians now. They have a deck lead. Yeah, like a machine. Look at this British four just fly, cruising, cruising. We see the Aussie bow seat, Alexander Purnell, just look over his shoulder. But Great Britain continuing to move just into the final 250. I think USA are in third place position. You can see on the graphic there, they are going to win the bronze medal. Australia are not out of it. What have they got left? Britain, have, have they gone too early? The Aussies are winding themselves up for a sprint. They must be absolutely exhausted, but who would write off Alex Hill? Look at him go, the South Australian. Jack Harker is behind him, he's backing him up. This is a fantastic sprint from Australia as we come to the line. It is still Britain though. Alex Hill sprinting. I can see from the angle, Britain are gonna take the gold medal. It is very close. A great race between these two fantastic crews. Great Britain take the gold medal. Australia silver medal. What a contest. USA come in to take a bronze medal, another medal for the American program. This was a fantastic race. You can see Matt Aldridge there, the three man of the British crew, bent over his oar. Wow, what a fantastic contest, Colleen. Oh, wow, absolutely amazing. We knew this would be a fantastic one. The semi final we said yesterday felt like a final itself, and then we were treated to even more incredible racing today. They're improving with every race. The Australians, they're going to be chuffed with that race. They've moved on. They got closer to the British in the semi final. They've got another three weeks over here in Europe at the European Training Centre before Lucerne. Who's to say they won't reverse that verdict? Yeah. On, on the road, say. We had that kind of angle. If you were watching on the TV, um, I was kind of commentating on looking at the crews <laughs> rather than the TV pictures because I could see that Britain were just maintaining that position out in front. There's the Australians driving off the start, Alex Hill. And they did lead the Aussies for a moment. I mean, a moment. So it was in, you know, before we got to the uh, the meter marks, I think it was halfway, perhaps in a third quarter. But uh, GB just really fluid clockwork. Great credit to them and their coach, Christian Belkel. Came back, was going to Germany as their kind of performance director, but uh, didn't see that the Germans had the setup that, well, they didn't want to change the setup to what he wanted. So came back to the British team and he's now working with that for Alex Pennell. 
dying behind the bow. Such an effort. Spencer Turin in front of him, Sydney Orsman. Confirmation 5.42. Ladies and gentlemen, the Great Britain! Great Britain, represented by Great Britain, represented by Oliver Wilkes. David Andler. Matthew Aldridge. 